We're in Mountain View today at Google with Stephanie Couch. Stephanie is the program director for the California STEM Innovation Network. She also directs the, the K-20 California Education Technology Collaborative. Stephanie uh, participated today in a STEM education forum sponsored by the Silicon Valley Education Foundation. Stephanie has been trying to make sense of the many different initiatives that are happening on the uh, state and national level. So first, Stephanie, welcome and thank you for participating. Oh, thank what you. What is the Innovation Network and <laughs> what is your goal? Sure. Uh, the California STEM Innovation Network is uh, a, an initiative funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the SD Bechtel Foundation. Um, they have resourced a, a project coordination team that, and an uh, initial effort that's co-chaired by Susan Hackwood, the executive director of the California Council on Science and Technology. Uh, President Warren Baker, uh, who heads Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, uh, Bill Swanson, the uh, head of Raytheon, uh, and then we have other members on our team as well, like Dennis Bartels of the Exploratorium, um, Diane Siri of Arches, and what, what this group is doing is it's reaching out to groups like the Silicon Valley Education Foundation, um, who are leaders in science, technology, engineering, and math. And we're trying to um, develop a STEM plan for the state that will do two things. One is we want to increase the level of STEM literacy among all students. Because in today's world, uh, today's students will make a lot of decisions that require that kind of knowledge. So we want a STEM savvy culture in California. Number two, uh, we want to increase and diversify the number of students who are pursuing uh, college and career pathways in STEM. And so STEM, as we know, is science, uh, technology, engineering, and math. And you have said that the T and the E are often uh, <laughs> overlooked. Um, what's the status of STEM education in California now, and what would you like to see it become? Sure. I, I think um, there are uh, differences uh, if you're talking about elementary school versus middle school and high school. So let's start in elementary schools. Um, there's a Bay Area study that showed that 80% of the teachers in grades K through 5 report spending uh, less than one hour a week on science. And so I think um, there are a number of factors that have contributed to that. Um, uh, the No Child Left Behind Act and its emphasis on English and math, science is not an accountability criterion to the fifth grade. Um, and, and there are other factors as well. Um, so one of the things we really need to work on in elementary schools is um, providing students with more access to science. Um, we also, uh, some schools are really great at providing ac access to new technologies and helping uh, students develop those uh, skills and capabilities, but in a lot of schools they're also lacking uh, uh, in technologies. And so um, we're looking at a variety of options, including ways of um, leveraging assets in the community to wrap STEM around kids 24-7. So because of this narrowing of the curriculum, and mm -hmm. it's often said you teach to what you're tested, and, and so must this occur, do you think, after school? Is that the primary way that STEM will be taught, or are you hopeful it will be integrated into the classroom? Yeah. I, you know, we are in the planning phases, uh, and we hope to have our plan finished by the spring. Um, and so far, the discussions have been about ways to bring the love of STEM back into the regular school day through a variety of approaches, as well as enhancing opportunity in after-school programs or science centers, uh, museums. Uh, even the entertainment industry has a, play to mm. role, a role to play. There's a role for everybody in addressing this challenge. And uh, I think for too long, we've made it a challenge that is the school's problem or the teacher's mm -hmm. problem. And it, it's our problem. Can you, can you cite a good example <laughs> where you've seen STEM education either outside of schools or in the community, something exciting that you can point to as an example. Oh, sure, they're all around, and, mm -hmm. and I mentioned uh, Dennis Bartels and the Exploratorium and their role on our, on our planning committee, and anyone who has been to the Exploratorium uh, can't leave there without feeling a little excited about science. 
Um, interestingly enough, uh, that was supported initially by some funding from the state legislature. Mm. And so, you know, we need to look at everyone and their commitment to um, stimulating those kinds of opportunities mm -hmm. for kids and families. And you mentioned something at the Lawrence uh, Livermore lab that was mm -hmm. an intriguing collect collaboration between the, the lab and schools. Did you? Sure, yeah. Uh, California is home to a number of federally funded uh, research labs and many of them offer teachers summer research opportunities where the teachers can understand the work of the scientists so they can convey it to their students. Well, Lawrence Livermore Lab is looking at taking that a step further and allowing students to video conference from their classrooms into the researchers lab so they can see it firsthand and look at the equipment and uh, then um, the students themselves will do a research project that mirrors the kind of research that the scientist is doing and that the teacher studied in the summer and um, they're looking at having multiple schools do that kind of research project, that kind of interaction with the lab, so that then once they get their research project back, um, the two schools can share their results via video conferencing. Now, th it's, a, it's a cool science application, but beyond that, it helps students become conversant with the ways of communicating across distances that I think yeah. kids today are going to be expected to do when they enter the workplace. Mm -hmm. So enable, enable schools that aren't in Livermore to be part of this effort somehow through technology? A absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we know that these kinds of opportunities are not equally distributed around the state. Mm -hmm. So I think if we get a little more creative on how we blend STEM, um, we can certainly leverage the assets we have. Now, many corporations are doing lots mm -hmm. with uh, STEM education as the priority, particularly in the Valley. So um, is there any effort to bring these many efforts or together so that you can bring them to scale? Is that sort of the challenge that we face? <laughs> I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, there's certainly a lot of passion uh, and a lot of projects around STEM, but uh, as someone said recently, I think it was uh, Tom Khalil, uh, we're fighting a forest fire with eyedroppers. So our grassroots efforts aren't adding up and we know top down doesn't work and so we're trying to find how do we really leverage for a problem of the size we have in the state and um, I'm confident that through the process we're going through we'll, we'll be able to uh, point out some of the best opportunities that can mm -hmm. go to scale and be sustainable. Is that sort of part of what you're trying to do in the, sh in the next uh, six months? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, we have had a lot of help in that regard from uh, Muhammad and the Silicon Valley Education Foundation. Uh, we really appreciate opportunities like today to understand what's out there and, mm -hmm. and the great work that can be scaled. Um, and the work of TechNet and the corporate uh, leaders from this region of the state who are continuing to um, make this, get this on the policy radar screen at the state and federal level. So um, really, it, it, you are contributing to progress in this area in many, many ways in addition to what you do locally, and we now, are grateful. Now nationally, President yeah. uh, Obama has said that uh, He's an advocate of STEM education and would like to f make that a focus. So what would you like the federal government to do? <laughs> well, um, the federal government will be rewriting the No Child Left Behind Act mm -hmm. in the next year or so. And I truly believe that we measure what we value. So one of the things we need to be looking at is um, uh, where we're placing our emphasis in the accountability that's part of that act. Um, and, and in the short yeah. one with the, uh, with, the uh, no, with the race to the top competition, do you foresee California making STEM part of its application? Oh, sure. Um, I think that the folks writing the application um, have every intent to have a, a STEM component to that plan. You get extra points for it, so mm -hmm. why not, right? Um, <clears throat> I think the challenge that we have is um, Again, uh, we have many efforts in California. We haven't yet built con consensus or, or energy around where the best opportunities are. So I'm hopeful we can identify that and get it in the plan. Well, thank you. Stephanie Couch, thank you, thank you for coming speaking with, with us today. We hope to uh, find out the results of your initiative. And uh, next year, we'll be checking back with you.
I'm Jonathan Stewart from the Educated Guests, and thanks for watching.